Newton's second law, uh, pardon the, the pun here since we've been talking about cars, but it really is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you'll, you'll actually do some mathematics to solve these problems, and you'll almost always use Newton's second law. So I'm going to introduce it for you here today. Newton's second law. State it and relate the Newton, the unit of Newton that we talked about before, to the base SI units, MKS, meters, kilogram, seconds. This is Newton's, the statement in words of Newton's second law. <clears throat> the net force on an object is proportional to its acceleration with the mass as a constant of proportionality. That's a statement in English. Here's a statement in Greek and uh, symbols. This is the net force, sum on forces, sigma. I, I just say the sum on forces or the net force uh, you can say whatever you want, is proportional to the acceleration, A, from chapter 3. And the constant of proportionality is the mass M. So let's uh, relate the Newton to the base, base, S, uh, base SI units. Forces are measured in Newtons. When you sum over various forces, you're still going to be measuring the forces in Newtons. So that's why we have a Newton on this side of the equation. So now I'm just looking at the units that we use to measure these objects in. Well, mass, you know what that is. That's a kilogram. It's one of the three base units. And acceleration, we know about that too. It's meter per second squared in SI units. So a, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And if you forget what a Newton is, in fact, I would hardly memorize this, you can always get this from F equals MA, which you'll, you'll remember now, hopefully, until you're, you're um, teaching your grandkids and have gray hairs. So um, Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. How can you remember it if you forget it? Well, you can remember F equals MA. F is measured in Newtons. Mass is measured in kilograms. Acceleration measured in meters per second squared. All right, a video. This is a cart with a fan on it that I can turn on to provide a force and push the cart down the track. And what I'd like to demonstrate with this cart is the principle of inertia and mass. The higher the mass, the more inertia there is. And what is inertia? Inertia is a resistance to changes in the velocity. So, for example, if I start off with uh, zero velocity and I allow it to accelerate, the mass is what's determining the rate of acceleration. If I add some more mass to the cart, then that adds more inertia and more resistance to changes in the velocity. But it's not just starting up from rest and moving to, a, to, to some constant velocity that matters here. The mass can also uh, slow, decrease the rate at which things slow down as well. So if I start off with some velocity, to start off with a velocity in this direction, the velocity is initially in this direction. The force provided by the propeller is in this direction. So if the velocity and the force are in opposite directions, then that force is going to slow it down, bring it to rest, and then start accelerating it again. But if you add mass, to the cart again. Again, the same experiment. It has, it, it takes longer to respond to that force. Force is mass times acceleration, and if you increase the mass and keep the force the same, then the acceleration is much less. 
So this is kind of like uh, pushing a football uh, player around versus pushing a ballerina around. The bigger the mass, the less you're going to accelerate that, that uh, person. Okay, that is Newton's second law. Another video. The Newton is the unit of force in the SI system. A force is a mass times an acceleration. And so one Newton is the unit of mass, the kilogram, times the unit of acceleration, which is meters per second squared. So one Newton is a kilogram per meter, a kilogram meter per second squared. These two foam apples uh, have a weight of one Newton each. How so? The weight is the force of gravity on an object, the which equals its mass times the acceleration of gravity. For a one Newton weight, if we're interested in the mass of that, we put, plug the mass in here, leave that as a variable, but plug in the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, for the acceleration. Solving for the mass, we have one Newton over 9.8. A Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So we plug that in for Newton. The meters per second squared cancel, and we end up with just one over 9.8 kilograms, which is about one-tenth of a kilogram, or about 100 grams. So the mass equivalent of a one Newton weight is 100 kilograms. This is a 100 kilogram mass, and um, at the Earth's surface, a 100, I'm sorry, 100 gram, not 100 kilogram, a 100 gram mass weighs one Newton. But if you take this mass out into space, since the acceleration of gravity would be less, uh, as you get, the farther you get away from the Earth, that acceleration of gravity would be less and the weight will therefore be less. Mass is a constant. Wherever you take this, it's going to be 100 grams, as is this and this. All, each of them weighs 100 grams, but their weight the force of gravity on them will depend on the distance from, from the Earth, on the local acceleration of gravity. Quick correction, uh, at the very end of that video I said each of them weighs 100 grams. I meant each of them has mass 100, kilogr 100 grams. And so we'll say more about the, uh, the equation, the weight equals m times g. We'll introduce that a little bit later and give you some more experience with that. But this video just gives you an idea about how much a Newton is. It's not very much, really. OK. Uh, looking at units for <coughs> mass, acceleration, and force, <coughs> the SI system is the one that we're using in this class. and. So in the SI unit, SI system, we use the kilogram for mass. We use a meter per second squared for acceleration, and we use the Newton for force. Uh, the British engineering system, I think we talked about the, the mass for that before. It's called the slug, and uh, acceleration is measured in feet per second squared, and the force is measured in pounds. So the, um, the equivalent, uh, in the English, uh, British engineering system to the Newton is the, is the pound, with which we're quite familiar already. And the conversion factor is there's about four and a half Newtons per pound. So one, uh, one Newton is one over 4.45 pound. So it's about a quarter of a pound or so, not very not very much. And if you want to convert my weight, which is 160 pounds in the British engineering system, into Newtons, 
looks like I'm about a 700 Newton guy. So um, just remembering that a Newton, numbers are, uh, a Newton is a smaller unit, and so to measure the same amount of uh, force, you have to have a bigger number of Newtons than you do for pounds. All right, let's see how well we understand this concept. Complete the following statement. The net force that results when two or more forces act on an object is determined by adding the magnitudes of the individual forces. So this actually harks back to the definition of the net force. Uh, how do you find the net force? Do you add up the magnitudes of those forces if one's three uh, newtons and then another one's four newtons, we add three plus four equals seven. No, we have to add those vectors. Remember in the second example that we did with the three, four, five triangle. So that's not, uh, that's not true, that's false. Can't add the magnitudes to get the net force. Uh, is the largest force acting, acting on the object? Well, what if you have a 10 newton and a four newton force? Well, is the 10 newton force the net force? No, no, it's, you've got you've to take into account all the forces. So that's false. It is determined using vector addition of the individual forces acting upon the object. True. Has a direction that is the same as the direction of motion. Well, what about that one? That's a great question. Uh, if you go back to the uh, demo video where we had the cart moving along, along the track and I had that propeller, if I pushed it in, in the direction, if I initially pushed it in the direction uh, for the opposite the direction of the force, then it was moving this way and the force was that way. And what happened to it in that case? And moving this way, the force was that way, so the force slowed it down. And then eventually it stopped and then started coming back in the other direction, in the same direction as the force. So the force and the velocity are not necessarily parallel to each other. In circular motion, the force is inward and the velocity is, is that way. So the force and the velocity are not necessarily parallel to each other, although sometimes they are. However, um, so this is false, the force and the acceleration are always parallel to each other. The net force and the acceleration. Why is that true? Because the sum the four over the force is the net force equals the mass times acceleration. Newton's second law ensures that the net force is parallel to that acceleration.